rest. The Lord is near. Refuse to fear. Enjoy his love. Trust, Trust his, his mighty, mighty power. Fills every hour of all your days. There is no need for needless worry. With such a Savior, you have no cause to ever doubt his perfect love. Still reassures in every trial. Call him when you get frightened. Call him with loving care. He'll lift your burdens and you'll rest. The Lord is near. Refuse to fear. Enjoy his love. This is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're reading Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Green pastures, I mean, that is an overabundance of, of, of your basic necessities. He leadeth me beside the still waters. There's your peace that passes all understanding. Verse 3, he restoreth my soul. He replenishes. He rebuilds. He heals. Yes, he renews. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Listen, what's the valley of the shadow of death? There are a lot of valleys that are full and plentiful, but sometimes valleys sit in the shadow of the mountains that are on, on one or the other side of it. A shadow is not substance. A shadow is an essence. It's, it's, a, it's a darkness that, that hovers over something because it's being the light is being blocked. Now, that does not mean that the shadow can hurt you. The shadow has no substance. You see my hand is right here in the light. So there's the light. There's my hand between me and the light, which casts the shadow. The shadow can't hurt me. I can slap in the wind. I can throw punches in the air. But the shadow that looks like it's coming back and punching me is not touching me. It's a shadow. Sometimes... We get nervous on threats. There's a threat over here. There's a rumor over there. We wonder if this is going to happen, if that's going to happen. Are we going to have an election fallout? Are we going to have World War III? Are we going to have a famine? Are we going to have riots? What is going on? Help, 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 help. Listen, those are shadows, not facts. Shadows. Now, I can spread a rumor about Peter and tell everybody I saw Peter wearing cornrows last week. It's a rumor, not a fact. A rumor is no more than a shadow. So when you get on YouTube and you hear about this fire going off and that fire going off and this explosion and, and that unrest and this problem and that crisis, don't get caught up in it. It's a shadow. It's not happening in your life, so it's not a fact, not for you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hmm. What's a rod and a staff? The rod shifts the 
the sheep. If they're going the wrong way, the rod taps that sheep and gets them in the right direction. If a wolf comes, that rod is used as a weapon. Beat him upside the head, but he will not let him get close to his sheep, not close to his flock. That's a form of protection, a form of redirection, a form of correction. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Your staff can pick me up and put me in your arms. Your staff is a, a source of comfort and protection, encouragement, reassurance. Listen, it comforts me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Sit down, y'all. Sit down at the table. You see all these all this audience of enemies, all these demons, all these people that have been talking about you like you got a tail hanging between your legs. Well, let me tell you, I'm going to set a table. I'm going to make you look good. Like Isaiah 54, I will set your walls with carbuncles and fair gems and stones and beautiful colors, which means I'm going to make you look good in front of everybody. When I get through with you, they're going to know you're mine. They're going to know I favor you. I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Yeah, they're going to know this is God's doing here. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. The anointing will drip on you as you draw closer and closer to God. That anointing is going to serve many purposes. It's going to make you too slippery for the enemy to get a hold of you. You'll slip right out of his hand. The anointing's so heavy. That's the oil of the living God. My cup runneth over. God will keep you so satisfied and so settled. He'll keep your nerves settled. He'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on him. Who's not focused on that fire, that fire, that problem, this crisis, that lie. You're focused on your Father, which art in heaven. Surely, and, and because you're focused, he keeps you in perfect peace and he keeps you satisfied. You've got that inner satisfaction at all times. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You dwell in that secret place of the most high God. God will keep you hidden like Lynette's dream with the, with the submarine and all this beautiful glamour around and, and this plush high-end stuff. And it was only a few of God's people. And they were hidden in the submarine. They were hidden from the strife of the tongues. They were hidden from the wars. They were hidden from the riots. They were hidden from the political unrest. They were hidden under God's divine protection. See, we have to remember the God we serve, not the world we live in. Yeah, the world we live in is Jack. The world we live in got issues. But the God we serve has overcome the world. Hmm. All right. Now, let's move on. Isaiah 66, and I want you to hear what God says. God says before in verse 7, Isaiah 66, verse 7, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to birth and not cause to bring forth? Saith the Lord. In other words, he's able to complete what he started, y'all. Shall I cause to bring forth and shut up the womb? Now what sense does that make? saith thy God. I added the what sense does that make? So let me read it again. Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith thy God? Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, 
and be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her, that ye may suck and be satisfied, there's that word again, with the breast of her consolations, her comforts, her reassurance, that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus saith the Lord, this is your word, you guys. I will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck and shall be born upon her sides and be dandled upon her knees as one whom his mother comforted. So will I comfort you and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bones shall flourish like an herb and the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants and his indignation toward his enemies. Let me read that again so y'all get it. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants and his indignation toward his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord will be many. He draws a line between those that follow him and those that don't. You don't want to be on his bad side. But I'm mainly bringing a word of comfort to God's people. In God, check it out, satisfaction. In God is your healing. In God is your deliverance. In God is your sustenance. God is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. He is your peace. He will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him, not on them, not on that, not on that over there, on him. See, a lot of our problem is where we're keeping our mind stayed on. Some of y'all are spending more time listening to what's going on out there than what God wants to do in here. Because when God handles you on the inner man, baby cakes, I don't care what's shaking, bacon, you're going to be chilling just like Jesus was chilling at the bottom of the boat in the storm. And the, the, the disciples panicked because they were concentrating on the circumstances around them. Instead of looking at him, knowing that if he he's the son of God, he's not going to perish in a boat. If they're in the boat with him, they're good. But no, they got caught up with the storm. Lord, wake up, lest we perish. Oh, they weren't going to perish. They got Jesus right there. How are they going to perish? Think about it. See, a lot of you don't realize what you have when you have Jesus. Jesus is not just a get out of hell free card. That's not all Jesus is, baby cakes. God is your doctor. God is your defense attorney. God is your vindicator. There are times God is your hitman because he will hurt your enemies that try to hurt you. You know, you have to remember, the earth is the Lord's. This is Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord's, not President Trump's, not President Biden, not the elites. Listen, y'all. Hmm. Not the Illuminati's. Not the devil worshipers, witches, warlocks, etc. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein. Everything on the earth, everything above the earth, 
and around the earth, everything in the earth, and everything under the water. It all belongs to him. Tangible, it. Intangible, it. Substantial or spiritual. The bottom line is, whether they be demons, angels, principalities, whatever, it all belongs to God. There was nothing made that he did not make. So understand who your father really is. Who's your boss? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Yeah. Remember who your daddy is. Because can't nobody stand up against your daddy. God does not play when it comes to his babies. He said, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. There is some serious hell to pay when they do. Serious hell to pay. And you get greatly rewarded. Whatever pain you experience on this earth, just for having to live on this earth, you get rewarded greatly because you're his babies. Listen. If God be for you, who can be against you? Now, I know there are times I've told you this before. You know, I live off $915 a month, Social Security. And there are times, I was talking to Jeanette about this this morning. There are times when the Lord pulls me off of food stamps. I don't know why, but I obey him. Because sometimes I think there are times when they... They put their tentacles out there and they try to see who they can jack up. So when I feel God telling me to get out of the food stamp thing, now I know I don't have income for my food. But I've never done without. Every time I've done it, God always provided. And he'll let me know when I can apply for it again. And there are times he may say, don't apply anymore. But the bottom line is, I'm obeying what I believe he's saying. And I've always asked God whether I'm right or wrong to cover me because I'm doing it by faith. And he always said in his word, if you eat meat, you eat it as unto the Lord. If you don't eat meat, you don't eat it as unto the Lord. Either way, it's by faith. Either way, he honors faith. Not exactly what you're doing all the time, because sometimes it's not a matter of sinning or not sinning. It's a matter of doing it by faith for his sake. So whatever you do, don't panic. Don't hit the panic button because of what you hear on the news. Don't start peeping out your window wondering when the riots are going to start. Cancel those riots. You got the authority, baby. If the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and you are God's and God is your daddy, you got the authority to cancel those riots in the name of Jesus. You have the authority to pull down, tear down, and destroy the works of the enemy with COVID. Cancel that bad boy. Destroy it in the name of Jesus. You've got the authority to cancel attacks from outside of the country. You've got authority to cancel every assignment of the enemy against God's people, especially against God's people and against yourself. You don't become a, a, a victim of the enemy, the enemy tearing up your body. You're not his victim. No, no, you're God's royal priesthood. You're a peculiar people, a holy nation. Don't let the devil drag you through the dirt, make you feel like a nobody. You're not worthy of anything. Nobody wants to hear you. Nobody cares about you. Nobody wants to be bothered. You're not worthy of anybody's time. Look, even God doesn't want to be bothered. That's a lie from the pit. Don't you go for that. You quote word back at him. You quote word at those negative thoughts. See, we're not only being attacked from without. A lot of us are being attacked from within. And you're battling discouragement. 
You're battling depression. You're battling heaviness. You're battling insecurities. You're battling hurts and feelings and, and ghosts and skeletons rattling in your closet from your past. You're battling stuff. Some of you are battling you. But God is greater than you. God is greater than your heart. God is greater than your thoughts. Mm. That's why we need to fill ourselves with his word that tells us how much he loves us. I had to do that this morning. I did something really, really, really stupid. And I've been beating myself up for the last two days. And I said, now how am I going to talk to them? And I'm sitting up here beating myself up. So I sat here like a big old baby and asked the Lord to reaffirm me to me. Reaffirm. Talk to me. Tell me what's going on. Help me through this. And sure enough, every scripture God gave me was so encouraging. Yeah, I'm backing myself now. I, I feel like I'm renewed. That's right. I may look old, but I feel like my youth is renewed like the eagle. Don't y'all agree about how old I look. You watch it. All right. So, but God's love, God's reassuring power will keep you from being blown by every wind, every whirlwind that comes your way, every rumor that comes your way, every shadow that casts its its. Uh, oh, it's darkness over you and, and tries to bring you down. And it, have you ever seen the little cartoon of the little mouse? The little mouse, probably about this big, and he's he's sitting in the corner of the of the wall and he sees the cat off in the distance. So he wants to scare the cat off. What does he do? He gets up where the light comes between him and the wall and he angles himself so that the light cast this giant shadow of the mouse and he's standing there with this gruesome pose trying to intimidate the cat with his shadow he ain't nothing but yay big little teeny weeny thing but he's trying to cast a giant of a shadow what can that shadow do to the cat nothing nothing it might intimidate him if the cat's silly enough to believe it but i ask y'all don't be silly enough to believe the, the shadows that are being cast over society right now. Whole lot of shadows being cast. Don't you buy into the lies. Shadows are lies. I can cast a shadow all I want, but you can't hug that shadow. You can't talk to the shadow. You can't touch. You can't be touched by the shadow. You can react to it. But don't waste your energy. It's nothing but a shadow. Things to come.